All right, so this guy says, I see your views were dropping ever since you guys stopped watching Boruto. As if us not watching Boruto was the reason our views went down. But okay, bro. Not surprised you came along, came crawling back to it. Uh, if you check our average views for anime canon Boruto episodes, you're looking at maybe 800 views. Hell, not even, don't even just take our videos for that fact. Take other people's videos. If you go to YouTube and search up the most recent Boruto reactions, you're not going to see anything past 2,000 views. You guys ever see those fan, uh, you know, thumbnails on YouTube? Kind of like stuff back in the day when people used to Google Super Saiyan 5 and Super Saiyan 6 and all this other bullshit for Dragon Ball. This is the same sort of thing on YouTube, but there are, you know, fans animating what if scenarios in the Boruto anime. And these videos are getting millions of views. You can't make this shit up. These videos get millions of views while some of the clips that Crunchyroll posts for the anime only arcs in Boruto right now probably break 50,000 at best sometimes. Ultimately, what this tells me is that the Boruto fan base is craving so hard for there to be something different in Boruto right now. They do not want to be watching this anime canon shit and they are starved for content. So then you see people making these fan edits and then you see all these people in the millions watching these fan edits because they want something interesting. Even if you're enjoying this arc right now, you have to admit that the views and the people coming to watch this arc there's not many of them a small percentage of a huge fan base are watching these episodes and that is not normal we're not starved for views watching or reviewing anime canon episodes on boruto believe me also i want to address everyone talking about you don't have to force yourself i'm not forcing myself to do anything guys this is my own decision to review these episodes um because like i said in some of my previous reactions with chris I want to let people know why it is that there are so many people not fucking with this arc. The attention that Boruto gets is so volatile because no one wants to watch this anime canon shit, but everyone wants to watch the manga shit. And I'm here to tell you why we don't give a shit. Um, these anime canon arcs are just okay. That's exactly why I feel this way. And we're going to get more into that for this episode's review. But um, yeah, man, let's just jump into it, man. Let's stop talking about comments. So the idea for this episode was that the Funato uh, staged a diversion attack. And while the hit and miss is distracted, defending, you know, the northern part of their sea or whatever, they're staging an attack on the Mist Village, which is completely unguarded. Like, I don't, what is wrong with this uh, Kage, bro? <laughs> now, fearing that the Funato will cross his hometown village, Kagura goes back uh, to his hometown and warns them about what's going on. They start beefing up their defenses, they're burning the bridges and everything. And this led to some pretty funny moments that i really um acknowledge and respect about this episode because some people don't really know the value of little things like this where you know you have a little bit of comedy in there to make you like these characters a little more make you uh respect them or not respect them but have an emotional attachment to these little jokes like when metal lee was kicking down the damn bridge and his pants ripped that made me actually laugh out loud and i like that scene <laughs> it, it was just so random and stupid, but yeah, little things like that. I I, I love those. I love those little uh, funny interactions between main characters. You know, it helps them build a relationship. And even with uh, uh what's her name, Habachi Habachi Ichigo, she kind of like helped Metal Lee sew back his pants and whatnot. So it, it was just some you know wholesome shit. I re I really like the interactions like that. And even though I would have loved for her to side with the Fanato or, you know, become rogue much more than what's going on now, I can at least appreciate what they're giving me here, you know, even though it's not as good as it could have been. This is the first time we get an idea that Hibichigo is basically on their side now, you know, and, and this is why I said that this concept probably wouldn't breathe for a while. Um... I would have loved to see her go into more of a role that is a antagonist. You know, I would have loved to see her uh, fester those emotions um, that this is the only way. You know, she she's she's desperate. She wants a way out. She needs to escape this prison life. You know, that that concept, that idea, that's some real shit. That's a real feeling someone would have. And for them to, you know, do away with it so quickly. 
Uh, it just, it just, it makes it boring, to be honest. Could have been so much more fun to watch if she sided with the Funato and kind of had her own conflict with these people. And when Boruto gets an opportunity to add extra drama in there, they kind of just don't do it, you know? A lot of Boruto is just chill, easygoing people capturing the hearts of all type shit, you know? Towards the end here, you see Habichigo kind of um, talk with Kagura. And Kagura is just the nicest guy ever, you know? He's telling her, you know, you you tried to kill me, but, you, you know, it was just an attempt. It was just a try. So that forgives it. <laughs> people are too nice in this show, man. I'm sorry. People are too nice in this show. I get it. This is supposed to be the everlasting peace that naruto fought so hard to uh uh uphold i don't know it just doesn't seem realistic man this ideal world that naruto created doesn't seem real bro if someone tried to fucking kill me i wouldn't tell them you know it was only an attempt you know you didn't mean it you can still change i believe in you that's not real like i would feel for i would fear for my life if i was kagura and even if kagura wasn't scared of her he still should have reconsidered acquitting her uh, after he she just tried to fucking kill him she just tried to kill him and you're agreeing to acquit her you should have at least said oh i'm gonna acquit you two not her because she tried to fucking kill me and who knows what will happen if she's acquitted after this so i don't like that about borto and that is a common thing a common theme with this show that just leaves a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to realism and you know real people and yes that was the ideal characteristic about naruto that we loved so much but that's because no one else was like him. You know, he was a one of a kind. On top of that, even Naruto had moments where he struggled with this concept. You know, he struggled with, you know, accepting someone and, you know, not letting anger get the best of him. That was a part of his character as well. So when people like bring up the fact that, oh, you know, Naruto was like that too. Not really. He had struggles. He had internal conflicts where he wanted to kill someone. He went through all this struggle mentally. Uh, to overcome it it wasn't st something that just came to him like with everyone in boruto but now everyone is like naruto and it's not as special and it's kind of boring to watch every single time and on top of that it's not realistic like sure you could say that naruto as hokage from his life experiences taught his people better you know he taught his people to forgive he taught his people to love but there's a big difference from being taught it and experiencing it and to experience it is a whole different beast and i feel like there should be way more conflict and internal conflict with the new generation of ninjas in regards to forgiveness and trust you could say that's naruto's story and it shouldn't be rewritten but at the same time it's realistic and to have realism in a show like this uh and just have it be more entertaining in general is important you know you want your show to have uh conflict and relatable characters anyways the convicts complained that their sentence of three years off was uh pretty bad and they want a better deal so kagura you know they take it based on faith that he will get them acquitted um he tells them yes i will do this to you i will talk to the higher ups personally to do this for you and they kind of just accept that including this girl um who just recently tried to fucking kill him. But this is why I said in the last episode, this thing was over in the matter of an episode. Her story arc of wanting to kill Kagura to get out of the situation was over. Like, I, I, I can't snap, but I'm not good at snapping, but like that, man, it was over like that. Another missed opportunity by the Boruto anime. You know, what, what can you expect? This happens so often with the show that I'm not even surprised. I guess one more detail about this episode is that Ikeda was missing, of course. So they don't know where Ikeda is. Um, and you know, I've had to make a good guess. He's with the Funato right now, charging this village. So he'll probably run into Borto at this rate. They waste a ton of time just planning things uh, in these episodes. Like, oh, we got a plan for the evacuation. We got a plan for defending this village. We got a plan for fixing a ship. In terms of main events, they're far and few in between you know they they put me to sleep so yeah three out of five stars there's my review for this episode guys it's still mid sorry to say if you're enjoying it again that's on you but we can't ignore the fact that 
big majority here are not enjoying this arc. So I seriously right now considering reacting or doing readings to the manga. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments um, because I've done it before. You know, I've done it live on Twitch and uploaded those uh, edited versions onto YouTube. And people really enjoyed those, you know, there's a lot of views on those. So I might be willing to bring that back.